All right, hello and welcome to another episode of Live Recon. Today I'm joined by one of everyone's favorites, Stoke. Good times. Doing, my friend? <laughs> we are going to be doing another episode, another interview today with other content creators. There's three of us today. It's not just me and Stoke. There's three content creators in the same stream. Al has read. He's going to join us. If you're not familiar with him, he is an amazing Twitch streamer. Uh, he does a lot of uh, hacking, especially like try hack me and hack the box stuff on stream. I think every Sunday, and I want to say Wednesday. I'm going to ask him to schedule. I'm not sure, but I know he's on. Uh, he's online every Sunday uh, around this time as well. Before we bring him on, a few announcements. Uh, I just uh, released a vlog. If you want to go and watch it, it's on my YouTube channel. It's called Beyond uh, Defcon. There was a Easter egg in there, but unfortunately. Uh, that Easter egg is gone now. Uh, somebody took it and put it on um, a Discord channel, unfortunately, so you can't see. I'm trying to pull it up right now. If you want to go watch it, it's called Beyond Defcon. If you, I think if you type it in, it should come up as the first video. And uh, I'm going to put it on the screen really quick. But yeah, if you want to go watch it, go on YouTube. It's there. This is what it looks like. If I can share my screen and figure out how to do it. There it is. Um, the Easter egg is no longer there. I may add an Easter egg in the video somewhere again. I'm not sure. Of course you will add a new Easter egg. If somebody <laughs> ruins your Easter egg, you add another one. That's the whole thing. That's what you do. Yeah, but also um, I went to it was fine until I went to sleep. And then, you know, a thousand people redeeming it quickly. It's pretty quick. But I got to figure out a fun way to do it again. Um, but yeah, that's it. What do you have for now? It's so, all good. All good. <laughs> fun times. <laughs> so you're going to do... Um, pre pre defcon now you, you're done um, beyond so you need to do before know, defcon. No, we, gotta, we, gotta, we gotta do a before and after defcon now maybe i'll do it behind the scenes of defcon this next year who knows i'm looking forward to it <laughs> hopefully you'll be, be there for this one oh, yes defcon's coming back blessed hopefully. are the international travels once they are allowed <laughs> to happen i hope so man i'm excited to see people i'm excited to see some of the friends we haven't seen in two years including yourself Dude, i got i got something i want to tell you what What's i'm not i'm not i don't know if you're uh if you're familiar with this but it is the yeah. really cool conference coming up called nahamcon that you really should check out it's uh no it's, only, it is. it's only 60 six days away and uh and six. it's going to be a lot of cool talks there six days away let me pull up the website for nahamcon this is what it looks like our keynote speaker who's also another co-host for this live stream on sundays jason haddix will be there of course, you're gonna be there, mm -hmm. and it's not a. <laughs> and of course, it's not a conference if John Hammond isn't doing the CTF, right? That that is the truth. So you will be there. We got Chubbs, we got Hackluke, Codingo, Faraz back on popular demand, right? Adrian yep. from Immunify, as far as I know. Uh, then there's a bunch of other people. So here's the schedule on the screen. It's not. Um, there's also more stuff that's going to be released in the next 24 hours, but I put the schedule up together. If anyone wants to look at them, this is the order of the talks. If you want to see someone in particular, you know what time they're going to be going live. And we also try to keep it very time zone friendly. So some people that are in other parts of the world that wanted to go early, they're going to be going earlier. And people like Shubs, Cody and Go, Hack, Luke, and Sean, who are in Australia, they're going to be going a lot later uh, for our Australian audience as well. It's perfect. It's going to be a long day, though. Fun times, but long day. It's one of it's, those days where you're like, okay, how many crates of beer can I have and food on the delivery? Because I'm going to sit there and be glued all day. Well, I'm, I'm going to be nice and dandy <laughs> and, of course, presenting. But if you are watching, this is what you probably should do. Clear off your schedule and set the Saturday to learn all things cyber and just have, have a great time with your friends in chat and hang out and all. And do me a favor. We don't want to collect any money. The conference is completely free. If you want to donate, please don't donate to me. Take your money, go to wesis.org. If you go on the website, there's a donate button. You click it, it goes directly to Wesis. Please, every dollar counts. Even if you want to give me $2, $5, you want to buy me a coffee, donate to the Wesis. You want to buy me pizza, give it to Wesis. You guys know I love ramen. Donate it to Wesis for the next two weeks. Uh, there's going to be t-shirts coming out in the next week too. Go buy them. 80% or 70% of the proceeds last year went to Wesis. I think it was like $2,000, which is still a decent amount. Uh, there's going to be some logos on there. I may make a quote that says something funny from this stream on it. Who knows? But 
please, if you want to donate, don't donate to me. Keep your money. Give it to Rhesus. Um, the sponsors have been enough for us to get the conference up and running. Big thank you to our sponsors. We have enough mm -hmm. to get the conference going up and running. All I want from you is to help me raise between three to five thousand dollars for Rhesus. Yep. All right. Are you ready to bring on our guest? Chat, are you I'm ready to bring on our guest? guest? Wait, wait, can I make an announcement before we bring anybody else? Yeah. I have a new emote. You have a new it's, emote? Yes. Can you guys spam the Jason Haddix emote? I have oh. a Jason Haddix emote now. I think I feel like I have to make an all has red re remote now too, because he's a content creator he's on Twitch. I gotta make one of him too. I gotta see one of his emotes. But look, it's in the chat now. I added it. I don't think Jason knows this exists yet. He, I, but, I don't think he knows it. Oh, sweet. <laughs> so we have. Can I get someone in the chat to spam all three of me, Stoke, and uh, Haddix, please? Because I think we, all three of us are in there now. Oh, there's a Stoke yeah, one. See, I'm, so I'm getting it. Oh, I'm so happy about that. I laughed so hard when you created that emote. Lord. There we go. All right. <laughs> there it is. There's the three of us. Cool. All right. Chat, let's bring mm -hmm. on All Has Red. Uh, one of the streamers on this platform himself as well. Mm -hmm. And let's get to know him a bit. Hey, man, how you doing? Not too bad, Nahamsek. How are you? Good, good. I see a lot of cultists in the chat. Am I saying this right? Yep, uh, you are saying that right. Uh, fellow cephalopod enthusiasts. <laughs> we'll get to that. I want to understand what that means. But I'm familiar with you. I've seen you on Twitch for, I think, a little over a year now. I think since starting the pandemic. But uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. Who are you? What are you doing? You know, How long have you been doing it for? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm a, uh, my name's Al Hazred, obviously, Al for short. Uh, and I am a professional red teamer uh, for a large corporation. Uh, and I moonlight te teaching my dark magics and esoteric ways on Twitch. <laughs> uh, and also memeing uh, and uh, generally uh, being angry at computers. I, I think we all share that passion of being angry at the keyboard. Yeah. Mm. Seems like it's, a part, it's just part of it it's just <laughs> part of the whole uh the whole gig you have to no one hates computers more than people who you people who uh, uh then computer science the people who are involved in computer science the right click on this no longer works for a reason <laughs> 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 so i'll just leave it as that <laughs> pretty sweet cool. so I'm, I'm curious though how, how did you end up getting into hacking uh, i mean you, you're obviously since you're a red teamer hating computers and and breaking stuff on a regular basis it has to be started somewhere right so how did it begin for you well uh i guess if you want to go all the way back the first yes. hack i ever did was god i was probably 12 or 13 um mm, and damn, back in those days in the early days of the internet uh, we didn't have these. We didn't have the what the kids have these days with the Facebooks and the Discords and the uh, and the Twitches and all that stuff. Instead, we Ooh. had uh, we had like message boards that we were talking to each other on. Um, and I was uh, a member of one of these message boards uh, for um, role playing various things. I was one of those weird kids, and um, I don't remember the reason, but I got really mad at one of the admins. And I just decided we're just going to figure out how to hack this forum, and I'm going to take it over. Um, and was I remember it PSPBB forum. It was an Envision Free Power Envision. Board forum. Yeah, close uh, enough. <laughs> yeah, and I and I remember I distinctly using Google, like the the early forms of Google before they took over everything, um, and trying to figure out how do you how would you hack an Envision Free Power Board? And there was this guy um who who said yeah just download my script and just and just run it and put it and just type it into the command prompt and uh yeah just execute the script and it's going to do what's called a what, what's going to what's called an sql injection and i thought that sounded Oof. cool yeah. um yeah. and uh, but with, i had no idea what it meant nor did i try to figure it out um and i just sort of downloaded and ran this script i just sort of went for it um, I, I obviously I look back on this today in horror. I, I just sort of ran say, it, <laughs> sort of like <laughs> executed so this bad. script because some dude on some dude said that, oh yeah, I wrote this script. Just go ahead and use this, and it'll add a new admin account for you. And sure enough, that's exactly what it did. It added a new admin account with the password of admin, uh, and I was able to log in. That was the first time I ever hacked anything uh, without having any idea uh, what I was doing. 
I didn't call but it hacking it, at the time. At the time, I was like, forum, "What'd you say?" It was on the forum, though, so it's not that you got an extra admin account on your co uh, your computer as well. No, no, no. no. Oh, I, I, well, I, 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 <laughs> we don't know I, that, I right? Not, not have known. Um, uh, but uh, I was on the. I got a new admin account on the forum, um, and yeah, I got to have a lot of fun with that. It was, it was, it was, it was a, it was a good time. I didn't really consider it hacking at the time. Um, because all I did was download this script and run it, but, but that's all I do now. So I, I guess that's true. And then later on, I hacked the forum right? in a similar way, but by guessing a password. And I also didn't consider that hacking. And ironically, that's also exactly what I do now. So uh, <laughs> I, I, those were absolutely hacks, and I just didn't consider them that way at the time because I didn't know the reality. Um, but I honestly I had no aspirations to go into cybersecurity. I was a pilot in the Air Force uh, for the... Oh for the start of my career um yeah my helmet's on the table behind me um because I, wow. I was supposed to give it back and just i just didn't you uh, kept it. i kept it i kept that they took two years <laughs> yeah. of my life i get to take the helmet okay yes I do. um and i just decided it wasn't for me and i had the air force reclassify me and they put me in cyber warfare uh and it was in the initial training for initial cyber warfare officer training that i uh discovered that i that these were my people uh, and that wow. this was where uh, this is where I needed to be. So yeah, that's how I got started with my career. That's incredible, man. That's very cool. On the whole aspect of um, running scripts on a stranger, I think that's what Metasploit is, right? That's what we pretty much are just. I mean, it basically is. I, I mean, all the scripts are open source. So we just had kind of have a general understanding that they're not trying to do anything. If 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 yeah. any one of them were openly malicious to the. Uh, openly malicious, I'm sure someone would point it out and all of Metasploit would be discredited. Um, so you can generally trust everything on Metas uh, everything in the official Metasploit repo. Now, I can't speak for if you're just copying, uh, if you're just taking a custom Metasploit module off of GitHub and throwing it in, I can't speak for that. Right. But anything in the official Metasploit, uh, the, in the official Metasploit uh, repo is is probably fine. When, when, uh, you, when you're on the stage, when you're running Metasploit anyway, you probably <laughs> understand a bit of computers into that level that you can actually read what's happening and understand what it actually does part of it. And then yeah. hopefully see that nuke your own computer is not in there. Yeah, yeah. Like, like it's uh, Ruby is not that hard to read. So it's not hard to figure out if a Metasploit module is, uh, uh, is doing what it, it promises to be doing. Um, you should obviously. It's best practice to read all the scripts before you run them. Um, but generally, if you find something on Exploit DB or in the uh, from these sort of trusted security locations, you can generally you can generally trust these things. But <laughs> not just pulling a random script off of. Um, I don't even know where I got it. Some I just found dude. it on Google. Just, <laughs> not, just yanking down a random script. Not even at, it, it was a Python script, and thank God I had Python installed because I was on a Macintosh. Um, and Python was installed on it. Yeah, I had a Macintosh as a kid, not a Windows, not a Windows PC. So, uh, oh, ones. yeah, Python was installed, and so I didn't have to. So I didn't have to worry about what Python was. I guess oh, your uh, your parents wanted you to be a writer and not a gamer, <laughs> so they made sure you you could type really good on your computer. No, my parents wanted me to be a doctor, actually. In fact, my mom still harasses me about it. When are you going to go to med school? Um, I was pre-med in college. I actually, my degree's in biology, of all things. Uh, and I have a very medical family, very medical and biology family. So, uh, like, my, my mom to this day harasses me about maybe going to med school. And I'm like, mom, I'm in cybersecurity. I'm doing We're my technically our doctors. We're the computer doctors, kind of, right? Kind it's of. I mean, I, I, in a way. That's not the way I would describe not it because sure. I don't want to spend time fixing people's computers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. uh, when you were first starting in cybersecurity, did you have any mentors? Honestly, the, the biggest one early on was Ipsec. Uh, he was right, just yeah. getting started on YouTube when I was digging first digging in, really digging into um, Hack the Box and starting to like actively learn on my own. Um, he was, he was, he had only just gotten started then he was very small and, uh, he, I watched his videos religiously every single week and, uh, all the way up through finishing my OSCP before I finally, uh, before I broke that habit. Um, yeah, so he was a very strong inspiration for me early on in my, uh, in, in my cyber journey, I guess. 
Yeah, I cool. think I'm sick and uh, I call it live overflow and overflow on purpose. Um, I think them two have had a huge impact on a lot of people that were early on starting. Ipsic comes up a lot. I think uh, Live Before does a lot of good content, but um, he has changed what he does. But I think Ipsic is still very strong on the whole hack the box, showing people how to hack into things and explaining those um, actual machines and techniques. He is, I'm, and um, he does it in a really easy to follow way. Such that, like, even on my OSCP exam, I remember vividly that I uh, encountered uh, I encountered a privilege escalation exploit that I remember that I had seen on his. I had seen him do, um, right. so I had to look up the video and I followed Ipsec's tutorial for how to root the box on my OSCP exam, just because there happened to be the exact same thing as he wow. had done in one of the hack the box machines. Wow. Um, congratulations, Dan. You, I, I've seen that you have a bunch of certifications. So let, let's talk about the, those later. But I, before we jump into that, I need to know more about the biologist thing. Uh, so was that your college degree? Is that is that what you became? Yeah. So I well, I went to the uh, I, I attended the U.S. Air Force Academy, which is a little bit different of a college experience. Um, okay. And all I wanted to do was be a pilot. Um, and at the Air Force Academy. Uh, you 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 go through the four years and you get a degree and all that stuff, but then you commission as an officer in the Air Force, uh, and you get some career field that you you put in your preferences ahead of time. And most of us become pilots. Um, mm. uh, most of uh, the the vast majority, uh, not the vast majority, I would say a little over half of graduates from the academy become pilots, um, yeah. uh, on average every year. Uh, so I wanted to be a pilot and you can major in anything and be a pilot. So most of the pilots major in stuff like uh, management, like business, like the easy shit. Um, but I've, I've never been I've never been one for the easy way. Um, so I, I picked uh, I picked biology because that's what I was interested in. Um, wow. And I'm again, I come from a family that pushes biology really hard. Mm -hmm. um, so uh and I took pre-med just because they let me take all the courses. I just wanted to take all the courses because uh, I was interested in all of them. Um, I wanted to take evolution and I wanted to take anatomy and I wanted to take uh, I wanted to take organic chemistry and I wanted to take all those things. And uh, uh, I, 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 I regretted that later on because taking 24 credit hours in a semester was not a good time. But uh, I did. Uh, but that's how I was. Uh, that's how I have a biology degree and ended up in infosec, and also was a pilot. I congratulate you on that. So you you actually have a biology degree, and you are a pilot. You, do you fly planes now? I don't actively. I haven't actively flown in six years. Six years would was the last time. Would you do it? If somebody asked you. Like, say, hey, yeah. You would you fly. go get your? Would you go get your license if you could? Well, when I've ever, I mean, I used to have a license. It just deprecates if you don't use yeah. it. Um, so, and it's just too much money to maintain it. Like, it's not only money that you have to pay to like keep the license up. It's money you have to pay to fly an airplane. And I don't own an airplane, so I have to go out to an airfield at the rent time in an airplane. And it, this is a lot of money and time that you have to spend. And I just, uh, I, I uh, these days in in my in in this current stage of my life. That time can be better spent using doing other things. But I yeah. do have a persistent fantasy whenever I get on an airplane. Uh, this is the time that we're gonna have like a like a the the movie airplane scenario is gonna happen, and both of the <laughs> both of the pilots are gonna be incapacitated, and I'm gonna have to fly the airplane down, and I'm gonna be like the next Sully. Okay, I'm gonna be the hacking uh, the hacking Captain Sullenberger. Uh, is, is, there, wait, is there a pilot or a doctor on board? I'm both. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no. I never became a doctor. I never went to. I never even took the MCATs. Uh, I only. I was pre med in college, and that is it. Um, and the computer but, seems uh, my broken. We need to have somebody to hack it. Can somebody hack the computer? Hack <laughs> I, I can do that too. It's like you got all of them. But that's a cool story. Uh, that's a very cool story to you know to go to school for something and become a pilot and then just say I want to do cybersecurity and do it again now. You know, it's a it's a big accomplishment. Uh, my life is full of me saying I just want to really do that thing and then just and then just doing it, uh, then just getting it done, and that plays a lot into what I talk about on my stream, which is tenacity, tenacity, mm. perseverance, and drive. 
um, I guess try harder if I wanted to get branded with it. Um, like it's, uh, uh, but it, it's that's that's really what it's about. That's what being a hacker is about. It is. You can't do uh, that. The focus and stay persistent and just stick to yeah. one thing and then yeah. muscle through until you deliver. Yeah, you need have, that have focus, that energy. That or did you learn it? I mean, everything is learned. Uh, I learned. I. I mean, I. Uh, I guess I did learn it. I learned it in my in my childhood. Um, my parents pushed me to be involved in a lot of things, uh, forced me to be in sports. I was a Boy Scout. Uh, I was a. Uh, I, I did martial arts for my entire youth. I did. I, I wrestled for. I wrestled. I ran track. Um, so my whole my parents really pushed me to do difficult things, do hard things, and excel at them. Um, so that's kind of what, uh, and, and that's kind of what, just what I'm about. I'm about doing hard things, focusing on them, excelling at them, um, and then learning other hard things, I suppose. Um, these days I also try to add the caveat, like we got to watch out for your mental health too. You don't want to end up one of those hustle grind people on YouTube. Um, I don't, I, uh, I, I do push my cultists to focus on their mental health and avoid burnout, but, uh, it is important to have goals and to strive for them, uh, and to strive for excellence in everything that you do. I agree with the, um, not becoming one of those YouTube grind people like wake up three hours early, go to bed no four hours that. late. It's like 27 hours in a day now. If you do the math. Yeah, I agree. But having goals is a big part of it. I think a lot of people underestimate the power of setting yourself up for a goal and really working hard to get as close as you can, if not crushing that goal. So I don't think you can crush every single goal. Um, right. You, know, you should set up some really like an actual goal and like a stretch goal. And if you get that stretch goal, good for you. Um, speaking of learning things and trying harder. You have a bunch of uh, certifications. Um, which ones do you have? I know with OffSec you have a bunch. Which ones do you have? Well, I'm kind of an offensive security junkie, the way I like to put it. Um, I have OSCP. I have OSCE, which is the old one that no longer exists. Um, uh, I have OSWE. Uh, that's web expert. Um, <laughs> And that is all of my OPSEC certifications at this moment. I want to get OSEP next. I just haven't started it. I've been busy with other things. <laughs> um, I also have CEH. I have SANS as GCFA. I have... Is that all of my certs? I mean, I have a bunch of Pentester Lab certs, if those count. <laughs> like, they give you a little badge or something that you can put on yep. your LinkedIn and counts. something like that. I, I mean, it, it, it counts as far as I'm concerned. It's on my LinkedIn, so... Yeah. Oh, I have CRTO as well. I forgot. How could I possibly forget? That's um, that's Rasta Mouse's cert, certified red team operator. I have that too. Um, that's my you most definitely recent sound like one. an expert. You can add that to your title if you want to on LinkedIn too. So there you go. <laughs> I, mean, yeah, so you I guess I could. For, yeah. How did you so, pick? Yeah. How did you pick which ones you wanted to? Um, do and go well, after? when I started, Offsec was the only game in town. Uh, which kind of discolored my perception uh, because now we have e-learn security. We have um, we, ha we have all these other people entering the space and my, and now I have like a, like a whole following, a whole cult worth of people that want my opinions on various certs that I haven't taken. Um, so I have to eventually take an e-learn security cert just so I can advise people on if e-learn security is worth the time or not. Cause um, uh, I, I would, I would just say that, Again, it, it, it's mostly what I'm interested in at the time. Like when I did OSCP, it's like I did OSCP because that was like the game. That was like you had to you like you had to get OSCP and then you were a real hacker, as it were. Yeah. That was the stigma when I was in the Air Force, that that was the hard one. And if you could yep. get the hard one, then that was uh, then that like I like there was one guy who was kind of like a cert collector. He had the full alphabet soup of uh certifications oh we're talking about john hammond here because john hammond has every single <laughs> he has every single he was like one of those characters but he got he was getting mostly sans certs he was doing mostly gotcha, right. uh he was getting the air he was the smart one getting the air force to pay for all the six grand certs uh that sans has um but he wouldn't uh, i i was like hey do you have oscp he's like oh no that one's the hard one <laughs> like and uh 
Um, and I was like, well, I gotta, and I, I, I remember distinctly when OSCP came into my, into my brain for the first time, like it was, I was at cyber warfare operator training, which is like a, like a high level training. The air force puts its, uh, it's higher level, like cyber warfare operators through. And we did SANS's net wars. And I was just completely lost. Like looking back on it now, this was like super basic shit um that uh, that i was doing but i was completely lost and there was one guy who really knew the shit like this guy this guy was uh, this guy was like a red teamer for the nsa i think at the time uh and so he got he knew what he was doing like he and i was like dude i want to be you how do i get down the path to being you and he was like you got to get oscp like that's that should be your first goal and that kind of like that's kind of the way my life has been. Someone tells me like I, I asked someone how to be something. Like I asked my parents one day how to be a pilot, and they said you have to go to the Air Force Academy. That was like at age eight, and then it wow. like burrowed down into my brain, and it just kind of takes root there, and that just becomes the goal. That just becomes what's going to happen. And uh, so I got OSCP, um, and then after that, again, Offsec was the only game in town, so I was like, well, I should go for OSCE now. Uh, and I got OSCE, and by then they had released OSWE, which is Web Expert. And I was like, "Well, I got to do that one now." And I'm just like, at the time, my the goal was like, "I'm going to collect all of the offsec certs." Um, I, I've kind of come off of that now, but uh, they have some uh, much better courses out today. So I, I definitely want to get OSEP at least, probably OSED as well. Um, and I got to do I got to do eLearn Securities Pen Testing Extreme at some point. I'm going to do that at some point. Um, at this point, I'm trying to level up my content creation right now. So I get my, my, and also learn uh, about some new stuff that I have going on in my spare time. So um, eventually I'm going to start a new cert again. It's not all about the collecting of the certs, just makes your resume look good, honestly. Because in the end, you don't know who's going to look at your resume. Um, but then again, both me and Ben, we aren't heavy on our certificates. Sorry for that. Made it through my whole no, career okay. without them. Did the whole OCP um, training, owned the 50, 50 boxes, did not do the test. Oh, no, that's totally reasonable. Like, people get, for me, I think it's just really helpful to have a goal. It, like, again, my yeah. I'm very goal-oriented as a person. So, like, just having a goal, like, to pass the OSCP exam is a very motivating thing for me. That's a, that's a, for, it's, it helps my brain to be able to focus and fixate on a specific goal rather than just having the esoteric idea of, I want to learn how to do Python or something. Mm. Um, but, uh, but uh, other people's brains work in different ways and you should do what works best for you. Mine is chaos. So it just works in <laughs> re weird patterns that I can, it, it, it's weird. Anyway, uh, I'm curious though, since we're talking about learning and, and, our industry is always evolving. It's always new techniques, always new paths. That's why I love it. And that's why I entered it. I ended up here and never left because it's endless possibilities to learning something new because I'm passionate about learning new things. So I'm curious about how, how much time do you spend on learning new techniques or spending time doing hacking and other things? That's that's kind of hard to quantify because I mean you know I'm a red teamer for my real job so I'm I would say I'm learning new things almost every single day, like every time I open up Google because I'm not really sure how to do something or, um or or something like that technically I am learning new things the 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 field in no uncertain terms is about constantly ingesting new information at all times and applying it the most important thing you can learn early on is how to learn efficiently and quickly. Uh, take in new information and apply it uh, in an active sense. Um, mm. So it's hard to quantify exactly how much time I spend uh, learning new things because I'm doing it on the job, I'm doing it off the job. Um, I, it's and 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 it's hard to actually. It's I I want to avoid actually saying like you need to spend this much time like devoting yourself to a uh, to 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 learning new things because then you're getting again into that hustle culture bullshit where you're encouraging mm. people to like eschew anything that brings them any form of happiness in life and constantly push themselves to improve their skills they should mm. be improving their skills but that doesn't mean they can't just they they, they can't chill out and play a video game now and then mm. or they can't uh or they can't watch a netflix series if it if it engages them and and so on and so forth um i would say it and it, it varies wildly depending on how much time like uh if i'm 
I tend to fixate like, like uh, my brain fixates on things. Um, uh, I, it's never been diagnosed, but I've been told that I might have ADHD. Um, like, cause I, I'm told that that's kind of a symptom of some people to have ADHD yeah. that they just fixate really strong on one thing for a certain period of time and they can't see anything else. And that happens to me periodically. So periodically mm -hmm. I might, I might stop, I might stop learning new things in my spare time entirely, uh, basically other than the stream and work, um, because I'm just fixated on a different thing. Like I, 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 and then a couple of weeks later, when my fixation dies down, I'll really dive into doing a new certification or I'll dive into learning a new programming language or, um, whatever, 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 uh, whatever at the time, that's kind of how I operate uh, on a general basis. So it's hard to quantify that sort of thing. Cause I could spend a lot of time on one day and then the next day just really, uh, and then the next day just kind of chill and watch Cobra Kai. Uh, I don't know. Like, you know. No, I, think, I can fully uh, relate on that. I do things in batches yeah. as well. And I call myself like a 60% person. I, I love to learn something up to a certain degree when I feel like I'm kind of mastering it. So hmm. I, like I wanted to learn juggling. And the day I learned how to juggle six balls in a cascade on a unicycle, the day I could master that, I put them down and never touched them again. And I've been hmm. obsessing for that for a very, very long time until I reached that goal the day after. I couldn't care less. I think the uh, the learning thing is also different for everybody. Everyone learns different, right? If you, it might take you the same thing. To, you know, you might learn something in three hours. I may take six hours. I think people learn differently. You can't say, you know, I spent eight hours in there. But it's just uh, the reason why we ask that question is we want to make a point to tell people, like, it's a constant learning journey with hacking. You're not going to learn hacking today. And, you know, in a year, it's going to be the same techniques. Because, no, there's new exports that come out. There's new techniques that come out. There's new things that come out. Get it learned. You know, it's a... It's a continuous thing that you have to learn every day. Mm -hmm. It's never going to stop. Yeah. And that was kind of a misconception that I had early on in my career. Like I was like, I, I, early on, I was like, if I just get OSCP, then I'll be a real hacker. I'll be a real yeah. boy, you know? And then I, and I did that. I got OSCP and then I felt no different. I, I still felt like I still had that imposter syndrome. I still was having to Google. I, I I figured there'd be a day when I wouldn't have to Google everything, and I could be like the hackers on TV, and like there'd just be code streaming down my screen, and I'd just be, you know, I, I figured eventually that would basically happen, and I would just kind of know how to do stuff. And eventually, I realized that not only am I never going to be there, nobody is ever going to be there. That's an impossible goal. We're all we're all just eternal learners, eternally trying to improve ourselves, and. The more that you actually learn, the more that your brain wraps around the enormity of the cybersecurity industry, and the more you become aware of what you don't know. So it feels like you're not ever getting anywhere. It feels like you're running on a treadmill, like mm -hmm. you're learning more and more stuff, but you're also becoming aware of all this other stuff that you haven't even touched on yet that you didn't even know about before. So it feels like you're not learning anything when, you up, when you've advanced light years ahead of where you originally were and uh i think it's funny i think you could relate to this a lot i think all of us can relate to this but when the streaming and the things people were so shocked when i would google things on stream and mm. i'm like really you're googling that i'm like yeah what, what fucking thing i have like everything memorized in my brain you think i have room for all this like i can memorize every single command and everything and everything how it works some things you do them repeatedly, repeatedly enough that you know how to do it immediately, right? There's some commands or some syntax or the tools that you use. Right off the bat, you can do it. Some things I still Google sometimes. I still have yeah. to Google. And people were so shocked by like, oh my God, do you really have to Google that? I'm like, yes. Do you want to give me the syntax or do you want to look it up? Yeah, no, that's totally... I, I get that question super commonly. And that's one reason that I picked up my stream and started doing it because you can you can watch... If, and IPSEC is a fantastic resource i'm only using him as an as an example uh ipsec is a fantastic resource john hammond is a fantastic resource mm -hmm. if you want to see what these these uh practice walkthroughs of the box to uh to really to, to and understand the nuances of how the box works um and be able to work alongside of him ipsec and john hammond are great resources for those yeah. things but that's not the reality of hacking. That's not what hacking is. I thought eventually, when I was working on OSCP, I thought I'd be IPSEC one time, and I and that um, I thought I would be IPSEC, and I wouldn't have to Google everything, and I and I would just know what to do. I know the commands to run. I know the syntax and all that stuff. That is not the case. 
uh, and that now on stream and I, and and that's why I started my stream, which was to show Pete to do live try hack me hack the box that I haven't done before and show people like what hacking is like off the cuff what it's what the reality of it is um and it's a lot of googling it's a lot of trial and error it's a lot of anger when your stuff doesn't work it's a lot of frustration and we have some fun with that on stream but i do that to show you to show people that to show people just starting out that this is normal this is what it is you have to embrace the process and like even someone experienced who's done like God, I don't even know how many of these freaking boxes anymore. I've done so many of them now. Uh, who's done a thousand of these stupid things? Not stupid. They're great. They're good challenges <laughs> on the whole. But um, it's stupid in the heat of the moment when you pissed off. At it is. It's crazy. stupid when you're fr- when you're struggling. You're like, I hate hacking. I hate hacking. I hate hacking. Yeah. Oh my god, it works. I love hacking. I love hacking. I love hacking. Until Somebody the next clip that frustration piece. comes along. <laughs> Somebody clipped that. We need that as a clip. Mm. <laughs> But you're absolutely you're like, right, mm, right. But that's the truth. That's the thing. We <laughs> all true. We, true. When you're struggling, you're hitting it. When you're winning, you're like, oh yes, I'm so good. Um, I had a question though. Uh, because you talked about coding a bit. And I want to yeah. know, do you think do you think coding is a requirement to do hacking? No, uh, not not in and of itself. Um, yeah, I've known pen testers that are not good coders. In fact, I would say the majority of pen testers I know um, are just not great coders, um, which is not to slight them. There's a ton to learn in this industry, and not all of it is programming. Um, but I think eventually, if you do pen testing for long enough, you're eventually going to have to learn how to program to some degree. Um, like yeah. using just being being shackled to uh, open source tools only lasts for so long. Eventually, as far as your overall skill level, eventually, especially when you start getting into AV and uh, EDR evasion, um, you really need to start coding that. That's the mm. if if you're a and and that I mean I'm a red teamer. Uh, red teamers yeah. need to know how to program to some degree so, because you need to be able malware. to. Yeah, you, you need to be able to run, you need to be able to write malware, essentially. Write malware yeah. that does what you want it to do. And you need it, it needs to be reliable and to run on the machine that you need it to run on. Like this is just this that that's just the reality of it. Sure, you can be a pen tester, you can get a you can have a career in cybersecurity. As I would say you need some ability to read code and make little modifications to it when necessary, because a lot of times a script doesn't quite work, so you need to tweak it a little bit. Um, but as far as sitting down and writing entire scripts from scratch, uh, yeah, you can definitely be a programmer and not know how to do that, but eventually you're going to need to learn it. That's why I, I mean, I push it on the stream. Like, and a lot of people are like, but what programming language should I learn Al? There are so many. And I'm like, just pick one. Like yeah. literally just, yep. it doesn't matter. Like all of the programming languages are good for certain applications and bad for others. Like Python is great for whipping up a quick script and, um, and that will automate some tasks that you need it to do. And I use that. I use it for that on stream all the time. Python is garbage for like um, writing malware that you want to run on someone else's machine. Python is bad for that um, for various reasons. But uh, C++ or C Sharp, that's, those are great languages for coding malware to run on someone else's machine. Just mm-hmm. But the first programming language is crucial. Once you learn the first one, it's mostly just learning syntax, uh, t- like differences in syntax for other languages. Like there's other nuances, like between like a non-object oriented language like C and an object oriented language like C++. There's some differences there, um, but in in, ge- in general, like the programming languages all have the everyone. Oh, they all have if statements. They all have uh, while loops. They all have for loops. They all have. It's all about. They all have ways to make HTTP requests and so on and so forth. Like it's all, it's only about learning the different ways that different, uh, that different, uh, programming languages do things. Just pick a language that, uh, you think applies to what you want to do. If you're most interested in like writing malware, maybe C sharp, C plus plus, that sort of thing. If you're interested in just automating tasks and, uh, whipping up a quick script and for general utility, Python's probably good for you. Just pick one and start learning. Put your hands on the keyboard and start coding. 
Mm. I think uh, also, but you know, to quote EBSEC, the scripting versus programming is a huge difference. For somebody like in your position, you need to know how to program if you're dealing with malware, right? Yeah. But the pen tester and someone just just getting into it, honestly, just know how to script, make your life easier. Make your yeah. life easier with scripting. No, I, yeah. I absolutely agree. If you're doing uh, something more than one, automate it. That's that's kind of then script it, batch it, do whatever yeah. you like. The way you, yeah. it doesn't really matter as long as you're doing it. I, I, I absolutely agree. Uh, people like ask me in the chat, like, what's a good book for learning how to program? And I'm like, you can't learn to program from a book. I'm not saying that you can't. Yeah. That I'm not saying you can't read a book and get useful information out of it as far as coding. I'm not saying that because I learned how, my first Python from a book, but. I didn't just read the book. I sat down, I took my hands like this and I placed them on the keyboard and I did what the book told me to do. If, and that is the crucial aspect. You can't learn how to code by reading. You must take your fingers and code. Like you mm. have to actually code. Like just set out with a simple task. Like I want to write a simple reverse shell in Python and just start Googling and figuring that out. And you're by just... Every line of code, you're going to have to like think about it. It's going to train your your brain to take in new information and apply it, which is what hacking is. That's what that's what this is. Um, so you, it's really important that you actually do the active component of coding. Like you can't just read your way to being a good programmer. Nobody's ever done it, and it, no one ever will. Just t you have to actually do it, practice it. I think finding a fun project would also be a really good mm -hmm. way to do it. My way of, so eight years ago, maybe a little bit more or less, I really wanted to be, get better at Bash. I understood Bash, but I wanted to get way better at it. I want to do more stuff with it. Writing a, I did, I used to do a lot of like recon stuff for bug bounties and every single task I would do manually. It was like 20 tasks. I would have to wait for one to finish, do the next one. And you know, you can, you know how to, you know, you can put them in a script and it does not for you, but it wasn't very organized. It wasn't, it wasn't that efficient. And I was like, okay, I'm going to learn how to do these things. That one was like the power of learning how to Google, like thinking about this hacking problem that I want to solve in the terms of an IT person. How do I ask on Stack Overflow that someone's already asked and how do I find it? Just knowing the commands and then looking up the syntax from an engineering or a network engineer's perspective was really helpful, right? And then you start to learn how to do these things and then you go, okay, now I've hit the ceiling with Bash. I want to go faster. I want to go better. You know, you pick another language and you keep going. I think having that project where you go, I want to learn how to do this with this language mm -hmm. really, really helps. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's again, I'm really goal oriented. So it's good mm -hmm. to have a goal like that. Like I want to write a reverse shell or I want to, I want to learn how to dump hashes with Mim like, like Mimi Cats does, but I want to learn it from scratch. Uh, you mm. know, uh, like like having a goal like that. That's originally why Mimi Cats came about. Like that's why Mimi Cats exists. And Mimi Cats exists because some guy decided I want to learn C, but I want to learn how to exploit the LSAS process with C uh, while I'm learning C. And that and Mimi Cats emerged from that goal. Like we like. Um, like people that a lot of the most well-known tools in the space started with some guy just wanting to learn how to do a thing. Um, and it's evolved into like a staple of the, of the, of the industry. So again, that could be you. It's just start learning today. And uh, you can that in, in a year that could be you. It's, it's just about, it's a, it's about, just it's about going to bed every night knowing a little bit more than you did yesterday. Yeah. That's that, as I say on my stream. It's about improving yourself um, and having a consistent uh, commitment to improving yourself. Do you, um, on the topic of you know the learning and getting better every day, do you do a lot of CTFs? Because one of the things that a lot of our guests mention is they got some sort of an exposure into the scene by doing a CTF or seeing a CTF? What's your take on it? Uh, I think CTFs are fantastic, not only because they help, they expose you to new challenges and they force you to learn, uh, but they also force you to collaborate uh, because like nobody is doing this field in isolation. I don't know of any, it's called a red team for a reason. There's because you, you're never alone. You have people around you. This is an intensely collaborative space. We're all working together to make ourselves better. So you're not only learning 
how to do simple CTF problems or how to how to tackle uh, whatever whatever problem the CTF has put in front of you, you're learning how to work with other people to tackle problems, which is a crucial skill that I feel like not many people talk about in this space. It's like it, the and uh, and it's one of the things that I bring up first when people ask me how can I get into the space, and I'm like, you just need to start collaborating. You need to get into the discords, get into these communities, start talking with people. You're going to find what you're going to find is that there are tons of people who are exactly the same as you as far as where they are in their skill level. And hey, you can start getting into discord voice chats with them and doing CTFs with them. That's a good way to not only start learning, but also make friends, build relationships. This is a tiny, tiny, tiny um, um, community, the cybersecurity community. We all kind of know each other. Uh, we all kind of know uh, like a, a little bit. So the earlier that you start that collaborative, embracing that collaborative process, the better off you're going to be, I guarantee it. Um, so I absolutely uh, encourage people to do CTFs. I personally, most of the CTFs I do are on stream now because I spend so much time doing them on stream. Um, and I can't, yeah, but, uh, but on occasion, I will join a team and do a CTF off stream as well um, because it's so good to... A learn and B just exist in the uh, among other people and learn uh, learn from other people um, and collaborate with them towards a single goal. Um, yeah, so I would say CTFs are an excellent excellent resource in that regard. Yeah, I wanted to um, highlight something you said. Um, something similar to what I said. It exposes you new challenges when you do CTFs. I think for beginners, especially, and I'm not saying this is only for beginners, but for someone who's new to the scene, if you participate in a CTF and you don't know what your niche is just yet, what you're, you know, you want to do cybersecurity, you don't know what that thing is for you. CTFs are a really good way to learn like different aspects of cybersecurity and hacking. Like there's the web challenges, there's mobile, there's execute, you know, executables, there is anything you name there is. You can figure out not the stego things. So we can skip that. That always comes up, <laughs> but you can see what you really like. You know, it gives you an idea of the, you know, the the types of challenges that you're really passionate about, or you may be good at and the things that you may not be good at. Right. I think it's a really, really good play to, um, it's a really, really good way to kind of figure out what you really want to do in the field or what's next for you. At least. I agree. Like a lot of people start out with that goal. Like, uh, I just want to be a hacker or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and that just kind of doesn't mean anything because even within, within the overall cybersecurity community, you got attackers and you got defenders and we're all like really defenders unless you're like a criminal. So like, but, but you have, you have the guys who do the offensive thing. You have the guys who do the defensive thing. And even within those niches, there's like tons of little sub niches. Like I know guys who are really into web apps, really into cloud security or really into, um, like, uh, the red team aspect and AV of an EDR evasion and that sort of thing. Um, everyone's got kind of their niche and you're not going to know, uh, what you really want to do in the space until you actually get in and immerse yourself in it and and start learning what interests you and what doesn't. And one of the things that can do that is is CTFs. Um, and CTFs come in all skill levels, so you can find a beginner CTF and just uh, and and uh, forget, make a little team uh, and start working together toward uh, start solving the problems together. Like that's how you that's how that's how you do it. That's how you get started in the space. That's the best possible way. Because not only are you going to be learning how to do the challenges, you're going to be learning what other people know that you ne don't necessarily know, but they can teach you uh, through simple collaboration. On the topic of CTFs, just uh, we don't touch the topic, but I'm going to do a shameless plug. If you want to play CTF, there's $5,000 up for grabs during the HomeCon next week. Um, if you want to play, it's two days, hosted by John Hammond. And there is some new, I think last time we did some malware stuff that people really liked. This time we may do some new stuff, maybe some stuff on crypto wallets, who knows, or the blockchain, who knows, uh, or smart contracts, I mean. So there is some new stuff happening. Shameless plug, if you want to come participate, there's up to $5,000 in prizes. I think the first team takes 2000 I saw someone say the only feed team. I know they're participating too from the CTF time uh, leaderboard. So if you want to come and participate, there's your chance. Just go to ctf.nahamcon.com. All right, we can resume. I did my show must plug. <laughs> That's your great. stream. I wouldn't say it's a shameless plug. It's your stream after all. Yeah, <laughs> but at the same time, I don't want to, I never stopped the stream to do a plug of the, the HomeCon thing, but I realized like the CTF is happening in like four days. <laughs> so I figured we'll put it on the screen for people to realize and go participate. 
But it's good. And, and so Ali, maybe I'll Ali mentioned part. the thing. You mentioned the thing that really just I resonated highly with. And then you said, like, we're doing it together and you're kind of winning together. That feeling when you're mm -hmm. doing it with a team and you're excelling and, you know, you're sharing experiences. Uh, mm -hmm. I do red teams. I do uh, a lot of other things as well. And, and the feeling when you have that shell and you created that persistence or whatever, and the whole team is excited. Everybody's just standing around that screen and you're like, oh, did it work? Is, is, is it going to work? Is it going to get snagged by the EDR? Are we bypassing it? Did we do enough this time? And then it stays. You're like, oh, don't breathe. And, and the, the whole feeling that you're doing things together and you're evolving, it's all high fives and, and such. You, will, you can get that through CTFs too with a bunch of people getting together and just hacking and having fun. Uh, that is sadly don't, something we don't get on the same way in bounties because it's it's highly more competitive and money is involved in another mm -hmm. way. So uh, I, I see a, a big difference there. But on, on that note, I saw your advent of uh, Cyber Santa on OS Int. And, mm -hmm. you t and, and the other day I saw you on Security Weekly and you talked about always into as well and you talked about recon a bit so i'm curious do you, what does recon mean to you and do you do any recon oh i do a lot uh as a red teamer a lot of your job is recon um yeah. like uh for a recent assessment i was gonna do i was doing vishing i was like calling people and trying to convince them to give me their credentials essentially nice. um yeah. i just was on this assessment i finished it I finished the report this past week. I finished the assessment itself a couple of weeks back. Um, so, but I had to do recon because I have to convince these people of my legitimacy. Um, like, uh, and that all of that is just open source recon. It's like it's it's knowing how to go on the internet and extract information from open uh, from uh, from about the company uh, from open source channels and then leverage it in a conversation on the phone to kind of implicitly impl uh, imply that the person should trust you, uh, essentially. Um, so yeah, I do, I'm, I'm very comprehensive in my recon. Uh, I, I take it very seriously and I like to specifically tailor all of my attacks to the target um, that I'm trying to go after. Like I've even, uh, one time, not for this most recent assessment, I red teamed uh, I'm outside of the NDA now, so I can say I red teamed Moderna back at the beginning of 2020. And uh, as part of gaining access to that, they were a tough nut to crack as far as to get somebody to click on a damn link, uh, to, to <laughs> click on a file. They were, uh, they had their users trained. Like a lot of times it's as simple as reaching out to one of their recruiters and sending them a resume that has a macro. Um, <laughs> uh, it, a lot of times it is as simple as that. Uh, but but their recruiters were not clicking on documents. They were just not doing it. Um, they would always just ask, hey, can you send me a PDF? And I'm like, Damn it. it's not going to work. <laughs> um, so instead, I devised a much more comprehensive attack where I actually I picked an in one of their interns off of LinkedIn. And like this guy played some college. He was like just out. of He was like just out of college and he played some college ball. Um and I crafted this whole elaborate story, like where I was this 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 girl who went to college alongside of him, but they hadn't known each other. I even looked up someone whose name to use um, and tried to do my best to make sure they didn't know each other, like as far as I could tell, uh, trying to like reconnect with him. I even like like flirted with him a little bit over email, <laughs> like over a couple of emails back and forth before I was like, hey. I really want, I hear, I see you work at Moderna. Can you get my resume over to somebody over there? Um, can I send you my resume and have you, and, and have you look it over or give me some pointers? And I sent him and I sent him a resume and he clicked on it. Um, and we had, and uh, then we, we were in as, as, as the, wow. as the hackers say. So yeah, you, you, the rec recon is very, very important in my line of work. You got to do, you got it. You got to do that recon. Um, the more you know, like the you know, I hate to do this, be the Sun Tzu guy, but yeah, know the enemy and know yourself. In a hundred battles, mm -hmm. you will never be defeated. Like, and that, and that's that's as true in hacking as it is anywhere else. 
That's a that's a cool story, man. That's a that's a lot of uh, that's a lot of recon. That's a lot of uh, social engineering and recon. That's, that's yeah. Even story. my teammates were like, "You're going overboard with that, man. Like, you, you don't really need to. We don't need. I think we should just try the the interviewer. I think we should just try the recruiters again." And I was just like, "No, this will work. I guarantee it. You just gotta. <laughs> I just gotta. I just. Uh, I, I I'm I'm just." really again my brain fixates on a specific yep. goal and my goal was to get this guy to click the link and he he clicked the damn link uh which you were really on the file you were al but, that that was yeah. it you succeeded congratulations again oh, thing. <laughs> and and i'll tell you what seeing that cobalt strike beacon felt um Ooh. felt really really good <laughs> really really good yeah that's uh that's cash money right there um wow happy that it wasn't the home i mean yeah that's what social engineering is i'm a professional catfisher that's uh, that, and my company right now puts me on all the social engineering engagements because, um, I mean, what can I say? I'm pretty good at it. Um, social I, engineering I take is it very a hard seriously. skill to have, man. It's 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 not as easy as people think it is. It's really hard to come no. up with a scenario to get someone to trust you. Mm -hmm. You know, so you can actually get them to click on whatever you want to give them whatever information you want. There's a lot of work into understanding the humans on the other side. I mean, no matter how dumb or smart they are, dude. Like. We can say people, humans are dumb. People, are, you know, the low, you know, whatever you want to say, like these people that are making mistakes. Yeah, it's not about being mistakes. dumb or smart. Yeah, but you know what I mean. It's just uh, you have to still understand what play, you play the man, right? You don't play the game; you play the man. It's, 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 it, it's about subtle social cues. It's not about uh, even the smartest person in the world to fall for this stuff because the whole point of it is to not engage the frontal cortex at all, like yeah. to just give the guy the implicit subconscious idea that they can trust you. Um, and mm. so that the frontal cortex does not get involved. 90% of the time when the frontal cortex gets involved and they get suspicious, you've already lost the battle. The, yeah. It's a lot of really subtle social machination. And yeah, not every pen tester can do it. Um, in fact, I'd say it's like a minority of pen testers that can do it because this is, I don't know, we get a lot of computer nerds in this industry for some reason. Um, <laughs> and, and the people with the social skills are, uh, um, are a little bit rarer, I think. Um, so no, that's true. Yeah. I used to get too much anxiety around that. I don't like the whole, you know, conning people kind of thing. I, I, I have a hard time shrugging that off afterwards. Mm -hmm. Uh, but so I, I've done it. I didn't, it wasn't really my thing. I definitely like digging into things, you know, doing recon and just collecting data and, and, and putting that in amazing spread, spreadsheets for somebody that really loves to con people to, to do the call. I get too nervous. I can't, I can't keep up the, I can't keep up the charade. You can, I probably could with a bit more training. I just don't enjoy it. I think no, it's that's, a, that's, you need to be comfortable doing it. It's something that you need to be comfortable in like being able to control your nerves to do that. It is nerve wracking the first uh, the first times you do it, especially if you're engaging with someone like either on the phone or in real life. Um, it is it is a nerve wracking thing because you're actively trying to be deceptive. And it's it for me, it just helps to be it's for a good cause. Like the company's paying me to do this. I'm not just some criminal who's coming in here trying to take advantage of people like this is for their own good. And that kind of puts my for me that, that just puts my mind at ease and I can be like, yeah. It's time to LARP as a criminal. Here we go. Which is really why I'm here. I want to do, I want to be Ocean's Eleven. You know, I want to be, <laughs> I want to do a heist. I want to do crimes, but I really, really, really don't want to go to jail. Um, so I, 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 I do them uh, legally uh, and ethically uh, through penetration oh. testing. Yeah, and it's lovely, you know, when you're you're tailgating someone through the door, you're standing outside, you know, you're smoking, somebody's opening yeah. the door, saying, yeah, can you help me in? Yeah, that's cool. You're walking up to the printer or whatever, plugs in that little device yeah. and then walks out again. Or, or you're standing chatting with somebody in a reception. It takes training, but it's cool when you do it. And when the team's like, fuck yeah, then it's fuck yeah. It's all, it yeah. feels good. It, it's a great feeling. Um, we did talk about recon, right? But I need... I, I need to ask though. We talk about tools. We talk about all that, and you said I run scripts on the internet and such. Is there any <laughs> tools that's your favorite kind of tool? I'm a burp guy, so I'm just curious if there's anything in your in your toolbox that you are particularly fond of. To make it easier for you, Al, let's make it like the five tools. If you had to, for the rest of your life, you only could use five tools. What would it be? Burp speak cannot be one of them, and I think Metasport okay. can be the other one. 
Okay, I don't actually use Metasploit all that much. If I if the five tools, um, again, in my line of work, keep in mind, I'm not in the bug bounty line of work. Yep. So the tools that I use on an average day are very different from the tools that you guys would use. Um, okay. uh, I'm also a burp guy, but uh, I, I don't use it as much as you guys. I don't, I, I don't think. Uh, my tools would be Cobalt Strike would be number one. Uh, okay. That would be, uh, that would, uh, Cobalt Strike... You know a tool is good when the when the the real APTs are using it. Uh, yeah, and mm-hmm. Cobalt Strike is the real goddamn deal. Uh, that's mm-hmm. uh, that. Yeah, you can't you can't go without that. Next to Cobalt Strike, there's going to be Crack Map Exec. Um, Crack Map Exec is basically I use it every single day on network. Um, it's it's basically all of my lateral movement needs. Um, it has some idiosync- idiosyncrasies that annoy me, but the sheer breadth of his capabilities. Um, make it basically a requirement for me to um be uh, to be solid at crack map exec um for not one of them could be burp suite burp suite would definitely be in there if uh because for attacking a website burp suite is uh is we'll talk about we'll have a dedicated question for burp to make it easier. for burp yeah okay yeah. Yeah. um yeah, I see chat is uh, saying that al loves zap al does not love zap <laughs> al hates zap uh zap is garbage uh, it's not garbage. It is. It's fine. It is fine. It's fine, but it's different from burp. And I'm used to burp. And I'm a boomer in that way. I'm set in my ways. Um, let's see what other tools. Nmap, I guess. Nmap is the the classic. Um, you'd also need Netcat. Netcat's great, or Ncat specifically. I like the uh, the uh, the Nmap uh, rep- Nmap's own version of Netcat. Ncat is better. Yeah. Uh, is the superior one. Uh, uh, Netcat is um, one of my most commonly used tools, just because it's excellent for just anything you need on a quick for a quick socket um, uh, for any reason. Catching a reverse shell, uh, uh, querying a port, um, that sort of thing. Uh, and I guess the last tool would be the Hack Tools browser extension. I've really gotten a, taken a shine to that thing. It's got a lot of tools built into it, just to, right there in a browser extension, so I can have a I can have a generator reverse shell for me. It's got a SQL injection cheat sheet. Um, it's got all, all kinds of stuff in there. So I'd say maybe that one, off the top of my head. Okay. Well, then let's talk about Burp Suite. You said you, you for attacking websites, you lose Burp Suite, right? Um, mm-hmm. What are your favorite Burp Suite? plugins is there any that you recommend that you know people should definitely use wait hold on before you answer are you a do you use burp suite for efficiency reason or for automation and tooling purposes because i use it use for efficiency. you know what i mean by efficiency versus tools right because efficiency is like i want to use repeater and true that's it and then some people are like no i live in the burp plugins i mostly use it no i don't live from the plugins at all honestly i don't think i can even name five plugins that i use i i use i use intruder um yeah. and i i use the active the the scanner plus plus uh that's the plug i i use that for um because i have to uh for like if i'm doing an external assessment like i have to run the scanner it's part of the like uh, i have it's like having to run nessus like it's pr- like the client expects it as part of the report so um i, I use the scanner plus plus um and tiberius got me to install one of these like one of these things that tests access control uh, the text that tests access control, but I can't name it. Now. Yep. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that, there you go. A common one. Uh, yeah. And that's like the only two extensions. Oh yeah, I have one extension that adds a custom header because sometimes I have to add a custom. Uh, uh, I want to add a custom HTTP header to every request, uh, and I don't want to just repeater every single request. Yeah. So uh, there's for some reason Burp cannot do that natively, so I have to install an extension for it. You can do a match um, so replace. That's a, What'd you say? Match and replace. Yeah, you can use match and replace, and use the uh, set the regex, and you just skip adding something, and add it for you. It could be. It could be the regex, or... though. You already lost me. I have to use a regex. <laughs> you already lost me. <laughs> but that's uh, like I, I. But most of what I use Burp for is for the scanner, and then I like because I have to, and then I use Repeater to tweak parameters and play with uh, headers, um, just to find uh, and to find strange behavior. Uh, I know that there are a lot of, I've always known that there are a lot of extensions that I could use that would make my job easier. I, I absolutely do know that. But I, to be truth be told, I don't do a whole lot of web apps on my on the job. Uh, most of the web apps that I do, I, I get the odd external assessment. Um, 
but uh, there's lots of pen, at my particular company, there's lots of pen testers that can do externals, and there's only like three that can do red team assessments. So generally, if I if there's a red team assessment, they have to have me on it. Um, yeah. So and as a red teamer, you don't do a whole lot of uh, web app stuff. So most of the web app stuff I end up doing ends up being in the on the stream, like on hack the box and try hack me, which is good because it keeps my web app skills improving, even if I'm not using them uh, for my mm. actual job. Um, and I just, uh, most of those hack the box and try Acme machines can be solved without any of these fancy extensions. So I know that there are extensions that could make my life a lot easier. Um, I just haven't dipped into them as much as I should. So based on, uh, everything you have said so far, I'm going to assume that you don't do bug bounties. Do you have a hot, take uh, on? I have a couple of CVEs that I got from like just regular assessments. Um, like just, uh, just assessments with companies. Um, but, uh, uh, but no, I do not do bug bounties. I, I, uh, I just, uh, it's not, and people ask me like, should I do bug bounties? And I say, uh, if that interests you, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, for me, it doesn't really interest me a whole lot. Like web apps don't interest me as much as they interest other people. Like they're still interesting in, uh, in some ways. Like I did this really cool try hack me machine, which was, a uh, tab nabbing attack, which was really cool. I thought mm -hmm. that was really a really neat web app thing. Um, but I'm more interested. I'm more interested in the social engineering. I'm interested in the cobalt strike, the lateral movement. I'm interested in how to pretend I'm an APT or a criminal. Um, mm. And I'm interested in the programming aspects as well. So, I mean, as a hacker, I would love to devote time to web exploitation too. You only have so much time in the day, though. So uh, yeah, most absolutely. of the time, when I'm when I'm when I'm thinking about what I want to learn, what I what do I want to learn to do next, uh, it usually ends up being in the red teaming world. Fair enough. It makes a lot of sense. But um, we talked about this earlier, and I've seen it on a stream where you're more or less like, okay, so I just got off work. Now we're doing the stream. Uh, mm -hmm. do, do you, and you mentioned it earlier, like time to relax the brain. At least I realize that I need time when I'm not hacking because my brain is active maybe all day. I need to relax a bit yeah. and do something else. Uh, I end up playing computer games or, or binging series on Netflix. Uh, do you play any computer games? Uh, I do. I'm a, I'm a, I am a gamer. I'm not as consummate of a gamer as I used to be back in the day. Um, like uh, some, I, I used to be like competitive in like uh, League of Legends and Overwatch and that kind of thing, but I don't really play those things at all anymore. Um, I just don't have time. They, they require too much of a time investment to really get good at them. Um, mm. and, uh, I can't really, I've discovered, I can't really like mentally play them casually. Like, like I, if I, if I'm doing something, if I'm putting that much time into it, ex excellence is the only option. Uh, so yeah. I have to, uh, I, I, I end up putting more and more time into it and I just don't have that time. I have, uh, I have that time could be better spent somewhere else. Um, most of the time when I play video games these days, it's going to be those single player story driven experiences that I really look for. Um, which right. is predominantly from software games recently. Um, although I've also enjoyed the recent God of War uh, from 2018. I'm really anticipating the sequel to that coming up later this year, I think. Uh, and uh, also the occasional Nintendo game like Metroid Dread, Breath, uh, Breath of the Wild, that sort of thing. Uh, most recently, I put um, an amount of hours I'm not going to say because like, I wish I could remove it from my steam because I look at it and I'm like, is it really that long? Um, into I like, really uh, spend this much time on this game. <laughs> yeah. Into Elden ring. Um, I, uh, I, I a hundred percent of it. I, I, I finished all the achievements oh. and I beat all the bosses and all that stuff. And it's a very large game. So that takes a very long time. Um, I'll just, I'll just say that it was, it was, it was just North of 200 hours by the way, if you're wondering Oof. how long it is just north of 200 hours. And I don't even know how that even happened. It just sort of, again, keep in mind my brain fixates. So for a couple of weeks, I was fixated on Elden Ring and uh, those hours added up as it turns out. It'll get you. Yeah, it's uh, it's quite a few days of playing it, but I mean, at the same time, if you're enjoying a game, man, there's nothing wrong with taking a break, taking a few days off and just doing video games. Let's just see, especially for someone who does so much man like you do from what you have described you do a lot so i wouldn't feel bad for putting too many hours in a video game it's not like you know you're just playing games all day and not going to work or doing anything in life oh absolutely uh i mean 
I don't I don't regret those 200 hours that I dumped into it. From software games are notoriously <laughs> very difficult and they have that sort of that same kind of hacker mentality of well, I died this time, but we're just going to respawn and we're going to try it again a different way. Uh and this time we're going to do better and we're going to get there. Um and it's it's about constant it's about failing, 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 failing and then finally you succeed and that feeling of success. It's the same kind of feeling I get when I get that reverse shell and and in hacking as when I beat that difficult boss in in a from software game. I have to ask, have you played Ninja Gaiden then? I have. I uh, unfortunately I have played Ninja Gaiden. Um and Ninja Gaiden was I it's one of my most ir- I honestly I look back on it now people like people th- like like uh I freaked my girlfriend out because of, at, at how much I rage at uh, Hearthstone sometimes. I was playing Hearthstone <laughs> at the time and I don't play it I don't play it now. But at the time I was raging super I I I I was playing Hearthstone and I was like super competitive at that game. I'm good at card games. Um and uh and I would get super super angry. And I I think about that and I like that like that doesn't even approach to the level that I got pissed at Ninja Gaiden 2. Ninja Gaiden 2 dro- spun me, like actually damaged my brain, spinning me into <laughs> dimensions of pissed off that have been heretofore unexplored. Like, uh, I, I, like that game starts out so great. It. There's there's so many different weapons you can use, and the combat feels really cool and stuff. And then, like, past the halfway point of the game, there is like every single room is like full of soldiers that fire multi missile launchers at you constantly. There's this giant fucking turtle. Like that just erupts the whole time you're fighting it, so you have to dodge the whole time and get iframes to just not get hit. And then, and then when you finally beat this cuck, he, he <laughs> with the warning, the thing explodes and kills you. Like it just ex- it explodes after you've killed it and kills you, so you have to beat it again. And you have to, and, and it turns out what you're supposed to do is to hold the block button, which somehow blocks the explosion uh and keeps you from dying like I, and i again you could tell that i've been like mentally damaged by this game i played it way oh. back in like 20 2010 20 2009 or 2010 and to this day i think back on it i'm like i've never been as pissed at a video game as i was pissed at ninja gaiden 2 um oh. I, it was but it's it was music it to was, my I, ears it's music to my ears because i yeah. deeply can resonate I mean, through all that, all oh, the pain, but I, I'm not out. I'm not as competitive as you. I, I, I reckon it would be um, in, in your household. It would be this new TV series comes out and, you got, and your girlfriend is going to be there. And so, babe, we're going to see it in one sitting, all episodes. We have to see it. Commit. Let's do it. Is it, that kind of competitive mindset to it? So, yeah, I can see, I can see you. Scary, but cool. Mm-hmm. I am very competitive and I don't allow myself to fail. So I end up like, for example, in Elden Ring, flinging myself at Melania, like for like three or four hours, just flinging myself at a boss for three or four hours and dying over and over and over again. That's just, that's just my mentality. I'm just, I just have that tenacity. Um, And I'm not even saying it's healthy. Um, And arguably it is not. Um, I just don't allow myself to go to bed a failure, I guess, which is, Sort of an unhealthy relationship with myself, but it, it works out. You, but you're always going to be a, a winner in my book, so it doesn't matter. We'll, what you are. we'll send it's you all the virtual the hugs. We'll oh, send you all the you. virtual hugs for uh, next time you have to uh, play a boss for three or four hours. <laughs> Not to change the topic, I think that's going to be the highlight of this interview. But you also are passionate about crypto from what we have seen based on your content and some of the other stuff you have done. Get this a little bit more. Yeah, if I say passionate about crypto, people automatically are like, this guy's a crypto bro. I am like the furthest possible thing from being a crypto bro. When I'm say I'm fashion when I'm passionate about crypto, I mean I'm passionate about opposing it, like as a cultural like staple. Uh I, I think that if cryptocurrency became uh widespread and we all had to maintain crypto crypto wallets and we were uh, and this whole web three thing they're talking about became widespread it would be a dystopian hellscape like uh, of a and a security nightmare like an absolute security disaster um and when i and i'm passionate about pointing that out and about also digging into the technology to point out like because i think the technology is really cool i think the things that it's being used for are the failure 
Um, uh, but I think that the actual blockchain technology and the implicate and like smart contract technology, all that stuff is really interesting. And I want to dig into it so I can learn about the security implications, because if they become much more widespread than they are now, eventually I'm going to have to pen test them anyways. So I might as well, gee, I might as well get in on this on the ground floor, figure out the technology. I, I again, and people in chat are joking about like uh, Cthulhu NFTs when I will never, I would rather be waterboarded on a daily basis than to peddle <laughs> NFTs. Um, I, absolutely, that will never happen under any circumstances. I'm not interested in, uh, in minting NFTs to sell to people. I'm interested in making NFTs that would be, that would be malicious or exploit security vulnerabilities. Um, I'm interested in the security implications of the technology above all else. Um, and also, and and that's why I've been digging into it recently. I've been learning how to code in Solidity. I've been learning about the EVM. I've been learning about uh, proof of work and proof of stake, um, and the weaknesses in this technology, so that I can, I, I so that I can, and also Explain the positives. You no, know, there are positive aspects of this technology, and I think people should be aware of it. I just, I'm tired of criticizing cryptocurrency. Uh, ultimately, it's just about wanting to be able to criticize cryptocurrency without the crypto bros being, well, you just don't understand it. And so eventually the goal now is, yeah, I do understand it. And here's why it's bad for all the technical reasons. You know, that's, that's what we're digging. And I think on stream, we're going to start digging into smart contract security uh, quite mm. a bit. Uh, so, that's good uh, stuff. It's going to give you a lot of use too. I'm as a content creator, that's an area people are curious to know more about. And if you are, if you're going to be good at explaining it, in a way that people actually can understand and grasp the idea. Because now it feels like all foo-foo. But as soon as you dig into and understanding some of the theory and how it works and gas and all that and how, how you write your smart contracts and how sketchy they can be, uh, mm -hmm. it's uh, it's very... It's uh, I'll watch that. I mean, please do. Bring it. Yeah. So I just want to make sure we shouldn't expect any like cultist coin or NFTs. Oh, God, no. God, oh, no. If I ever did one, it would purely be to experiment with the the tech like just to just as part of my tinkering i'm a tinkerer i like to play with things i like to learn about them it would and, it, and i would not absolutely not like not make any money off of it under any circumstances any money i did make would uh, go to charity and stuff i i have too many principles to actually make money off of cryptocurrency I'm, i oppose the technology i will not become a crypto bro and succumb to the succumb to it as i dig into it that's uh that's just not the kind of person i am um I, but I, I I like maybe that. like spinning up my own token at some point just to learn how the token is constructed how to do this kind of thing um just because i'm i'm curious i am i'm just really i'm curious about the tech and you have to understand the tech to undermine it yeah. um and there are so few people as you pointed out um this is the real dark magic of the modern day the real dark magic is the mm -hmm. blockchain um, yep. And it doesn't appear that it's going to be going away anytime soon. So um, it's best that I learn about it now uh, so that I can uh, really understand it and advise people on it going forward. All right. So we are almost at a time. I want to make sure we cut us to your time and Stokes time since you guys are in a different time zone than I am. It's still early for me. I can, I can do this all day. But we typically change the last bit of the interview, this, this you know, the show. Uh, to more of a mental health slash personal aspect of, you know, how you deal with day-to-day -day things. Um, before we watch this, we started doing a disclaimer that this segment of the show is brought to you by three dudes who don't are not mental health professionals. professionals. So this is not legal advice. It's not mental advice. <laughs> We're just three not dudes. Financial that are, advice. Not financial advice, but it's just uh, three people that have struggled with similar things or experienced different things, uh, sharing their experiences. I, I like doing that disclaimer before we jump into it. All right, so I'll let you kick us off. Okay. Um, one, one question that we, we've kind of been touching on it a little bit back and forth, and it's the whole concept around work and life balance. It's uh, it's something that you, the older you get, you realize the importance of that. But as a fellow ADHD person, I know how easy it is to obsess. And I found routines in my life that makes my life easier, that makes me do things because I, if I let it go out of control, don't have any routine and don't have my balance, I eventually, you know, uh, I wouldn't say I don't burn out, but 
I get borderline depressed in a way, you know, I'm, I'm not happy when I get do something too long and I, it's too repetitive and I need to do something else. I'm curious, how do you balance your work life balance? I get up. I, you oh, just nice. got to leave the computer. Sometimes we like, especially since 2020, we've all become really fixated on screens. Um, mm -hmm. So I get up, I exercise. I have a, I have a, uh, people know on the stream that I have a, uh, a pretty strict workout routine. I work out, I go hiking on, uh, I go hiking in my spare time. I like the, uh, I live in an area that's, that's near, that's near outdoors that I can easily get to. Uh, you just need to, you need to, uh, for the, at the, at the risk of sounding like a meme, you need to touch grass. Okay. Yeah. You need to go outside. You need to, you, you, get grounded. you need to interact with other people like directly, like, and, and maybe that means on discord, discord voice, if you don't know anybody who's close to you, but I cannot emphasize enough how much it helps your mental health. Even if you're an introvert, um, which I am, uh, I can only tolerate so much social interaction a day before I just need to withdraw into myself and kind of recharge. But I can't emphasize how important enough, how important it is to interact with other people to feel like you're connected with other people in the world to feel like you have friends that you have people that you can confide in and interact with with that like you that is that does such that does so much for your mental health and will give you uh that will and that that'll that that will keep you going more than anything else i would argue um that'll keep you from burnout more than anything you have to uh, you have to interact with other people and you have to step away from the computer sometimes like the, that's, mm. that's really all I would say. And that's, that's what I do. And for the most part, it works for me. Um, but you, you just, uh, another thing is you just got to be able to recognize when the burnout is coming. Um, like you gotta be like, God, I, it, what, that first time you say, God, I'm really just kind of sick of looking at this. That's where the burnout's coming in. You just got to recognize that just kind of step away. And, um, and like, I don't know, make uh, like cook something for dinner or, uh, watch a movie that doesn't involve hacking or something like that. You just gotta, uh, you just gotta recognize it coming and step away and remediate it uh, on your uh, as best you can. Uh, that's what I would say anyway. It works for me. Do you, I think the the working out. I mean, it doesn't have to be yeah, some physical activity. I want to highlight oh, the yeah, physical yeah. activity. You know, because you, you said I never thought like, I don't want to go to the gym. I get it. I don't want to be a, whatever you want to do. But I think the physical activity of doing and breaking out. I think Stoke would always message me a year and a half ago. I was going through some stuff and Stoke knew a little bit about it. Um, and he would message me and say, go out there in the sun and break a sweat was the term he was like, break a sweat just mm -hmm. to get something out of you, you know, some liquid coming out of your body. And that really helped. I don't understand. I was like, what do you mean? And then I started running a little bit. I did 30 days every day. I ran for about two miles. I'm not running the entire time, but you know, doing like intervals of 30 seconds, running, walking 30 seconds on and off. That really helped with the mental health aspect. And I stopped doing it for a while, and then my mental health completely went. I hit rock bottom in August. And I started working out uh, every day since then. I take breaks here and there. You know, you go on a vacation, you back, get back into your routine. It takes a while. But the working out every day with a healthy diet has been a game changer, dude. Mm -hmm. It is insane what just going outside for a walk every – I walk for twice, 15 minutes. You know, I take my dog out on a walk on the neighborhood, 15 minutes each time go to the gym that has done wonders and i think people un underestimate the power of that and it's really simple to be to be fair all it takes 15 minutes of your day 15 minutes is like nothing to just do something with such intensity that you break a sweat then all mm -hmm. these magnificent wonderful hormones and 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 mm -hmm. and chemicals in your brain is going to get released and you break out whatever mm -hmm. habit you're in and you're changing the mindset it, it all that it takes then celebrate with a great shower and a great meal and some TV or whatever you want to celebrate with, have fun with it. It's, it's just, it's 50 minutes. All it yeah. takes. You're Do absolutely you, right. The, the other thing is, um, I, I don't know if you guys struggle with this at all, but I used to have this like voice in my head that was telling me I'm being unproductive when I was watching TV or I was just doing nothing. You know, like it's at seven o'clock, eight o'clock. I would just sit on the couch. I'm like, I could be doing this thing. I could be making this thing, right? And then I like, just got really hard. It got, eventually, I got better at controlling and getting used to not letting that consume me. But I had this whole thought in my head of like, I could be doing this instead of watching Netflix. I could be doing that. And then I would watch Netflix and the next day I'll be more energized to do things. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so glad I took that day off or I took that two hours off. Mm. 
No, it's self-love um, in that stage. It's it's your um, if if you if, if you skip that voice and say, actually, do you know what? I, I did freaking good today. It doesn't matter what you did, but I- instead telling yourself like you did good, that makes mm-hmm. way more impact on your life. And especially mm-hmm. the day after, say, okay, maybe I'll take this few minutes. Like if I'm feeling super unproductive today, I'm just going to relax the rest of the day, but I'm going to schedule a thing that I'm going to do tomorrow. And then yep. your brain just relaxes into that and you're giving yourself that opportunity to kick back. And then you're also setting intentions for tomorrow. So you, you're getting mm-hmm. ready to do that thing. And while you sleep, things, magical things happen. And in the morning, you're going to be all energized and hyped to do that thing. It's yeah. self-love. I agree. Oh, I absolutely agree. Do you have a daily routine of anything, like things that you have to do every day or in the morning, every morning routine or night routine, anything like that? Uh, nothing that, uh, I mean, like other than going to the gym on most days, then yeah, I do have that. Um, other than that, like it's, it's pretty loose. I am a creature of routine. Like I do like to do things at the same time and, and stuff like that. I just kind of naturally slip into those patterns, but I don't have anything that I like list. Like we're going to start off the day by doing, uh, doing this. I would say, uh, I do do my pull-ups, uh, and I do fit deck stuff. Whenever I, my, my rule is whenever I walk into the office, I have to do 10 pull-ups. Um, so, uh, that's like, that's just a personal rule. It just keeps my, keeps me active during the day. Um, it, it, you can, I find that it keeps my brain active if I keep my body active. So you get up and yeah. uh, so, uh, if I, if I get up and I leave the room for any reason, uh, and then come back in, I have to do 10 pull-ups. Uh, and then I feel a little bit more energized after I'm done with the pull-ups and I sit back down. I'm like, okay, what were we doing again? Let's get back to it. Um, I find I stay I, I'm more on task that way. So I do little exercises throughout the day that keep me active. They keep my, uh, cause again, I find that they keep my brain active as well. Um, that's, that's really about it other than streaming at consistent times. Like I, I don't have anything else that I say, I got to start my day by doing this. Like sometimes I'll just, uh, I'll sometimes I'll just be dragging ass in the morning and I'll just have to drink a Red Bull or something. Uh, that's, that's, that's about it. Um, I, I'm I'm not really a planner. Uh, I'm more of a uh, let's just do the stuff. Let's just uh, yeah. let's let's just do it. Um, so I just kind of make things up as I go along every single day. But I do have some things that I consistently do, like my pull ups. Mm, I like that. That's a good thing. You, you can probably just mix that up with a bit of Pomodoro as well. Like you know, yeah. put a clock and do that, and you ding, and you do your pull ups, and you're getting up, and you're moving around. It's very good for yeah. you, especially if you're if you're struggling like. I'm I'm team shrimp fam. Like I, I spent so many hours in bad, in bad server rooms throughout my whole life. So my body is like broken, uh, and uh, so I need to work really hard with my neck and my posture and all that shit. And you need that lumbar make... support in your chair. That's really really important. Absolutely. And but but if you skip that for a long time, you know it's sketchy. Anyway, um, I want to move over to the last question, and it's something that I deal with. Everyone I know deal with, but I want to know how you deal with it. And that is, mm. how do you deal with, or do you ever struggle with imposter syndrome? Oh God, all the time. Uh, it's a plague. Uh, in this in this industry, imposter syndrome is is just a given. Uh, basically, everyone except for Jonathan Data feels imposter syndrome, <laughs> um, and uh, and it, it, it's it is an absolute scourge. I, it is, um, you're, it, it's, it's, it's honestly a constant battle. Like you constantly feel like you're not good enough. Um, and it, you're constantly fighting against it at all times. Uh, and that's, it, it never really goes away. I thought it would go away when I got OSCP. It didn't. I thought it would go away <sighs> when I got my first red teaming job. It didn't go away. It's not, and it still isn't, it's still there today. Like, like if I can't get, especially, it, it especially comes flaring up if I can't get something i just can't quite get it to work um or for whatever reason and i'm like god am i really at all good at this stuff what's going on what am i why why can't i get this simple thing um uh and you really you you do need to fight against that you do need to be aware right. of you you do need to be aware that imposter syndrome is inside of you and you need to be aware that some a part of it is healthy uh, some of it is healthy because you know what? It keeps you humble. It keeps you mm. from turning into uh, the, the worst that Twitter has to offer. Um, and, and it keeps you, 
it, it, it gives that humility to say that, that to be, to be like, Hey, I am constantly learning like everybody else and I need to devote my, and I need, and uh, that I need to improve. I need to go to bed tonight knowing a little bit more than I did yesterday, mm -hmm. but you don't want to take it further. Like saying, I'm just no good at this stuff. That's when you start getting like beating up on yourself uh, about it. The key to managing imposter syndrome is to say, everyone around me is also suffering from imposter syndrome or at least all the best people are and you need to, and that and um it therefore it is a normal natural thing and i shouldn't feel bad about myself for it and i should really grasp onto those victories that i have those times when you really feel like you are a hacker so mm -hmm. that the next time when you're when you're feeling on down you can think about back on that victory and it'll help it'll help smooth out the curve a little bit for you there as far as your mood. Um, but again, if you're going to be in this field, you're going to suffer from imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome burnout are very, very real uh, in this, in this field. And you need to be aware of it. You need to do what's necessary to take, a, to take, uh, to take control of your mental health uh, and keep yourself uh, keep. Uh, I, I mean, I almost said, keep yourself performing, but it's really not about that because it's about living. It's about, being happy in your own skin, being being satisfied with who you are as a person, that all comes first before your performance uh, at your job. Um, so yeah, uh, yes, I suffer from imposter syndrome. I think just about everybody does, and to suffer from it is to be a hacker in some in some senses. But you do need to learn how to grapple with it. I think, uh, yeah, it's it's something that you embrace and you just learn. The more you ignore it, the harder it's going to get, I think. Mm. I think also admitting that it's not humanly possible to know everything. It's I think a lot of people struggle with understanding that you, you can't know everything and everything. And it's never going to – it's going back to what we talked about. It's an always learning process, and there's always going to be smarter and better people than you mm -hmm. in this industry, especially with what we do. I well, they're probably better in a certain area. That's that's how it is. Mm -hmm. Some people specialize in something, and you can see them. It's like when I'm sitting next to Tom Nom Nom, for instance, he never leaves his command line in and out and women making yeah. all this great stuff and you're like oh that's insanely super fluid you're on hammond the same way it goes really fast right all this hacker stuff i'm still like gracefully doing my kind of <laughs> pointing way at it and, uh, and and when you're sitting next to those you realize they're really really good at certain things and then you ask them with something else okay how do you do a uh, x thing in uh, in active directory mm -hmm. it's like no clue never touched it like okay so so you you don't have 25 years of experience of hardening active directory because that's what i have and i i want to do the things that you do and you seem mm -hmm. really good at things you do so you must know the things that i know as well and you end up with this whole fake idea that everybody knows mm -hmm. everything you know plus all the all the cool things that they are plus all the cool stuff know. that they've displayed yeah. to you that they know i i think that's very astute um, that's absolutely accurate. Um, you need to be aware that everybody else is also just a learner, even the people that you idolize, uh, and that there's always going to be people better than you, uh, that you perceive as better than you. Like to this day, I still perceive Ipsec as better than me. Like I'm going to like, um, like, um, which he is. Um, but, uh, but that doesn't, that keeps me working, keeps me learning. Uh, I don't necessarily feel bad about myself. I just embrace the fact that there are people around who are smarter than me. You don't ever want to be the smartest person in the room. If you're the smartest no. person in the room, find a new room. You should be no. surrounding yourself with somebody who knows more than you in some area. But keep in mind that they may know everything about web apps or whatever. Like Tiberius knows more than me about web apps. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. Uh, and I come to him for help on web apps, but he doesn't know shit about Active Directory. And he comes to me about Active Directory. Um, so he sees me as better, I'm sure, as better than him in Active Directory. So that perception, Stoke, is very, very, very important. I think that's that's uh, that's really perceptive and important to realize. Cool. I agree, man. That's a really good way to put it. Um, before we say goodbye to you, I wanted to see if there's anything you wanted to add um, to this stream, to this show. I think we got through all the questions we had. We tried to keep up with everything that came into um, the chat. Also, from a question wise, is there anything you want to add on before we say bye to you? Go to bed tonight, knowing a little bit more than you did yesterday. Um, but again, keep in mind, keep an eye on your mental health. But you should be uh, being hackers about improving yourself. Uh, so you should, the earlier you embrace that, improving yourself and um, collaborating with others, 
um, towards towards mutual improvement, the better off you're going to be. Um, uh, Chad is asking about like how to how to get a job and stuff. That's more of a that's more of a question than I can ask uh, than I can answer right now. Um, I would say if you're just getting started, uh, the best thing you can do is collaborate in the community. Uh, start yeah. collaborating, uh, participate in CTFs, talk in discords, um, uh, make friends, make build relationships, uh, and you're naturally going to start learning as a part of those things. So uh, uh, that's all I would say. Uh, if you have more questions, feel free to. Uh, follow the uh, the incoming raid to my stream, and uh, we will uh, we'll talk about it there. You can ask me personally. That was gonna be the next question. If you're gonna stream and we can raid you, but yes, uh, we're gonna say bye to Al. Thank you so much, man. We're gonna raid you in just a few minutes. We'll let you go live while we close out the stream. But thank you again for giving us, you know, your Sunday afternoon, spending some time with us, and sharing all your knowledge with us, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. I hope we can do it again sometime. Stoke, it was great to it was great to meet you. You, you uh, I hope we get to. I hope we can uh, establish a relationship as well. Um, thank you, everyone, for being here. Thanks, Chad, for being here. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. I'm I'm truly humbled. Thank you, man. Thank we'll you. talk soon. See you in a few seconds or a few minutes. That's it. All right, that was it. That was a. Uh... That was a fun stream. I see a lot of the cultists in the chat, which was amazing. I, I love seeing when people's like followers come in the chat and then it becomes a you know combined group thing. I love doing. I love seeing those things. I love seeing these communities come together. And I saw a lot of familiar names. I saw. I see some of the regulars from Al's stream in here. Some of the people that some of the other Discord channels being in here. It's it's cool to see everyone coming together for these sorts of uh, events, man. And I can't wait to do more of these. Isn't it amazing the way that you know, we entered all these interviews with this kind of idea that it's going to turn out in some kind of way. Then he's turned into something else. And, and you learn so much more about the person that you're talking about. Yeah. Like Al, super guy, right? Super guy. Yeah. And uh, you're getting into his mindset, getting into his brain, seeing all the cultists here showing up, you know, supporting. Mm -hmm. That's badass. I love yeah. that. And, and I love to see how this community just is growing and be more open like i was talking about it the whole thing meet people talk to people engage mm -hmm. network we talk to ipsec same thing i i advocate that all the time like try to network create relationships with people and eventually magic things happen because in the end we love computers but people are the ones that will give us jobs create relationships and create uh mental health yeah. in the end i agree um that's it this was the only episode for i mean this is a, this is it for this episode next sunday i don't think i'm gonna go live since everybody that hosts is live recon are gonna be a guest on the live recon next week is gonna be at nahamcon so if you want to come hang out with us next saturday come hang out the ctf starts in a few days stick around i'm gonna do my outro i'm gonna say bye to stoke do my outro and we're going to raid al stay here so our numbers are high for when we raid him but stoke thank you again man for joining me tonight it's your night time appreciate you and i will see you next saturday or this saturday see you dude see you. all right chat that's it we're gonna raid into al's channel stay here don't mess up my numbers we're gonna raid him with the 300 uh people but i'm gonna start the raid i'm gonna do my outro i appreciate you if you missed the interview it's gonna be live on youtube uh, if you want to come hang out with more of us, me, Stoke, uh, John Hammond, Jason Haddix, ZLZ, Shabs, everybody else, next Saturday starts at 9 a.m. PT. Go to nahamcon.com. For more info, I love you. I will see you all on Saturday. Peace.